at this rate, anything's possible. What if man? you get shot, robbed, beaten, stabbed? I don't know. You know? Boy, you're really putting it out there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, if something terrible like that happens. And then we'll show my murder video at the next uh, no. live. <laughs> I've changed. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, welcome. Welcome to your mom's house. This episode of Your Mom's House is brought to you by Sattva. Go to sattva.com slash the shit right now to get $225 off the purchase of your next mattress. And welcome. Oh, God, I fucked my leg, dude. <laughs> sure did. <laughs> Help! Uh, maybe you heard. Maybe you heard. I had a little, I had a little spill. Hi. I'm back in studio. It's good to be back. Um, and uh, the seat next to me is empty this time. Last week, she was here. I was gone. I'm here. She's gone. It's a fun game that we're playing these days. Uh, if you didn't hear, I had uh, I suffered a horrific um, basketball-related injury that we have in 4K and multiple camera angles. That we're debuting on our New Year's Eve live show, Two Bears Live. Burt Kreischer and I are going to be doing it together. We're going to review all the footage because we played together that day with uh, Tristan Jass. And um, yeah, it's going to be the first time. <laughs> I've seen it. Uh, and I, I showed it to a trauma surgeon and he winced. He was like, oh, I don't want to see that again. And I was like, what? I was like, this is what you deal with. And he was like, that's terrible, man. That's terrible. I'm like, What? So, yeah, my injuries, um, torn patella tendon, uh, broken, snapped in half humerus, big bone up here, and I bruised my radial nerve. I didn't damage it. I didn't sever it. I bruised it, which is why I have the, hi, <laughs> cool glove on. Um, and that the fun thing about a bruised radial nerve, if you don't know, it controls, you know, wrist flexion and uh, finger extensions and movements, numbness. So I'm like, so what's like, you know, the forecast here? And they go, well, your new, your nerves will just regenerate and it'll just come on because you didn't, you didn't damage it. And I go, <laughs> I go, well, how long? And they go, well, the fastest we've ever seen it happen is three weeks. And I go, that's not that bad. And I go, what's the longest you've seen it happen? And they go, 21 months. Cool. That's kind of a big range. You know? Talking about three weeks or two years. And they're like, yeah. You'll just have to wait and see. And they go, it's not going to take that long for you. I go, well, how long do you think it'll take? And they go, months. <laughs> All right. Cool, man. Cool, 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 cool. Um, yeah. So uh, let me see here. My computer's a little. All right. Yeah. It always says. Do you want to run this update? And I always say tomorrow. I assume that's what everybody does. Yeah, that's the, run the update tomorrow. That's the right move. Um, so why am I here? Christina's not here. So I went from a uh, hospital to home to another hospital. And then when I left the hospital after my surgeries, after they put me back together, they're like, you can't go home. You're too immobile <laughs> and uh, you need to recover more. So I went to a uh, rehab, rehab and recovery center, you know, um, that has like machines and therapists and everything. Stayed there for a few weeks to try to get better. Uh, that's where I was when I zoomed in on the last episode. Um, wasn't feeling well when I, for a couple of days, you know, but I was also coming off oxys <laughs> and uh, a lot of tears. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. Yep. I was crying a lot. Um, so when I left there, I went home. And as soon as I got home, I was like, I'm, I hadn't been home. I got injured December 1st. I get home. Oh, my God. It's December. What was it? I can actually tell you. Because it was pretty close. It was pretty close to uh, to Christmas, I think. Yeah, I went home the 19th. Right, yeah, the 19th I go home. I hadn't been home 
since the first. As soon as I get home, I get a notification that I'm COVID positive. <laughs> God. I'm having chest pain. So I brought that home, which was, was a cool feeling. And then uh, I was lucky. My, my symptoms weren't that bad, you know? I mean, I, I didn't feel good, but I felt worse before I got home. So by the time I got home, I was like, oh, I don't feel that bad. And they're like, yeah, but you know why you felt kind of shitty? COVID. Um, my symptoms were like diarrhea, uh, achy, fatigue. I was tired. That was it. That was it for me. Uh, I brought it home. <laughs> I gave it to Christina. And uh, her symptoms were even more mild than mine. So she had, um, I don't know, uh, loss of smell. She was kind of, kind of tired one day. That was it. That was it for her. Um, so I had to, I waited out my, my, my from when my uh, symptoms onset, I waited, um, what is it? 14, 15 days now. Um, I got a negative test result uh, yesterday. So I was able to come in waiting that period of time. She's still in her window because she got it after I initially did. So that's why she's not here. And that's that. What a great month. Now, uh, we have some special... <laughs> Jesus Christ. We have some special stuff planned for today. Um, we're going to go over some of the all-time greatest top dog calls. Some of them are so far in the archives that they're audio only, uh, a, a number of them, this before we were shooting with video. Um, one of them, the, the first one I want to start with, is a legendary call that... Um, uh, that really opened people's eyes to who my dad is and what's important to him. Um, I don't even remember. Do you, do you, Nadav, when, when, did you listen to the show back that far back or no? I think I started listening to you guys, I want to say mid 200s. Oh, so this is way before. Yeah, like this was always something that I've heard referenced, but I, I didn't hear it when it first came out. Orlando, Orlando Airport. The Orlando Airport. Dude, yeah. we've had DJs name themselves after this incident. DJ Orlando Airport. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I remember bits of this story, but uh, that's, you know, I don't remember the call, like the, this call, so this should be fun. By the way, did you miss me? Were you worried about me? Dude, it's been such a crazy month. It has been, right? It's just been one thing after another. I thought you breaking half your body was going to be the only bad thing I, we needed to I figure know. out. Around, I know. And then it just kept on piling on. It's a wild month, man. You know, the thing that like people keep asking because they'll be like, hey, man, you know, it's not that big a deal. You know, like you break your shit and you get he and you heal and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It isn't that big of a deal. You're right. The thing is that when you have something like this, you realize that it just it takes hold of your time in a way that then fucks with everybody else's time. You know, that's the part that's like the uh, the burden. Because, like, for the first few weeks, you're like, oh, I'm not in charge of anything. Like, people are just telling me, no, just sit here. And, like, and then, you, I mean, you need assistance to, like, fucking turn the air conditioning down, you know? Like, crazy shit like that. And then you're like, you know, at most you can handle is, like, an email or a phone call for a few minutes. But then you're like, you know, so then I don't have my own time. Then other people... Who's, who rely on me for time are like, well, you're not available. And that's the part that's like a burden, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember there were so many different situations where we're like, okay, we're going to set up a Zoom station for you in this location. And yeah. then, like, I think we've we packed and unpacked the same box maybe five different times. Yeah. And then we just kept on realizing, like, oh, yeah, this is impossible. Or like, oh, yeah, we can't really do that feasibly in this type of scenario. It's just... It's so great to have you back, though. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, it's uh, this is the first time I've actually seen you since December first. It it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we were here December first, and I where we recorded the end of the year episode. That's right, and I also jumped in the lobby. I remember that, and I you yeah you you uh we I remember we we were discussing the bet 
Yeah, we were discussing bets on whether or not you'd be able to do something or not. Mm -hmm. And then you were like, fuck all y'all. And then you, you, you bounced one of the ceiling tiles and you're like, and it's going to stay like that. Yep. And then we got the call later that night. Smart guy. Smart guy. Um, <laughs> should, we, uh, should we start with the, uh, the first one? Yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's do it. All right. So this is from episode 45 of your mom's house. This is my dad with the Orlando shit story. This will be a, a rush down memory lane for me too because I do not remember how this played out really at all. And all day, you ever had one of those days where you just fart all day? You just can't yes. Out? Yes, I've had days like that. Don't you love how sincere he is? <laughs> he's so sincere. He's yes. like He's like, I have had days like that, buddy. buddy. I do know that. Yeah. Oh, I, I had, you know. I had one, and you know, I had. I you turned that down. You turned down the oh, yeah. background. This yeah. is my life, by the way, with my father. <laughs> every phone call, every time I ever, or even if he calls me, yeah, there's a full volume television in the background, and I go, "Can you please <laughs> turn that down?" Every what's, time. What's he watching? American it, Idol. It's always whatever. It's news. It's a game. He's like, "Oh yeah, hold on a second, buddy." Yeah. Always. Yeah. I went to John the other day, and I had like three false alarms. I thought I was going to do, you know. Do a dump, and what I had was these big kind of like gas bombs. <laughs> yeah, he went to John's to the John who oh, he meant to oh, say, oh. Yeah, 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 nothing came out. <laughs> it's kind of relieving, but it's disappointing at the same time, right? Yeah, you know, as much as I enjoy taking a shit, <laughs> which I really do, you know, it's it, it's at my age, it's almost like a sexual experience. Um, yeah. And then you have, and you go, oh, shoot. Well, no. That was him expressing, oh, shoot, is the expressing mm. disappointment. That he didn't take I didn't, a shit. I didn't realize it right then, actually, in conversation. I thought he was saying, oh, shoot, in the moment right. about something that just happened. Yeah, me too. That No, he was actually saying, like, you know, when you go to, to, to take a shit and nothing comes out. You go, oh, shoot. I think he's right about that old guy thing. That's what my father was saying. Yeah. Oh, you got to take a good shit. You got to yeah. take a piss. It's wonderful. I'm like, all right, I yeah. guess. <laughs> Guys fucking really. <laughs> yeah. Because you know what? I think the older you get, you realize <laughs> some of the best things are the simple things that we yeah. all do. Cleaning your ears out. Oh, that feels so good. Right? Uh, getting a dry bug. I love it. Dragging you're, it out, flicking it. You're just thankful to be able to take a shit. I yeah. And a, and a shit is such a relief. And you're like, oh, it's man. It's the best, dude. And then you have, and you go, oh, shoot. See, he's just, well, you know, and then you come back, and all of a sudden you feel that urge again, and, you know, and you head down the hall, and you, and then, of course, you hope nobody's in the other stall there, but I had, a, I had the other day, I had, like, three false alarms. Oh, I hate that. I, um, I, you know, I had to, I couldn't, I hate shitting on a plane, I had to sit on a plane today. Oh, I hate <laughs> shitting on planes. Yeah. <laughs> he's, Who doesn't? He's huh? really on board with this idea, too. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I do. I, I don't know what it is. It's the Smaller confinement. Jet. Yeah. It's the confinement. And they really don't have very good, let's face it, the toilet paper on planes is not really. It's, up you know, it's not. It's not big league stuff. No. Yeah. No. You know, you almost feel like you're, taking your, your own role in your carry-on luggage and going up yeah. in there. And using some of that good Charmin. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a point. He's got a real good point, man. And I and I I would God. not be. I hope you guys start bringing that good Charmin, as my dad says, <laughs> on flights with you. Pull I, that out. Pull out that roll and be like, I'm going to take a shit. And you can. You can. They'll, they'll let you. Nobody do it. can tell you no. No. What they will. What, what will happen is some people will see you leaving the bathroom, and they'll be like, Did you just take that toilet paper out of the bathroom? And you'll yeah. be like, No. This is my own. Mm -hmm. I brought this. It's like it's like when we bring. I just farted. Oof. It's like when we bring tapatio to the taco stand. Yeah, and then the other patrons are like, "Can I borrow your tapatio?" I'm like, yeah. "Fuck no." No, you cannot. I brought this shit from home, bitch. Mm -hmm. Fuck yourself. Go I fuck like your that. I, it is confining. I've shit on a plane I only hate once. On planes. Once. Oh really? I've done it a few times. Oh, it's so uncomfortable. Believe me, I only do it when there's no other option. Yeah. The worst is, the, I'll tell you, the worst planes to shit on are regional jets. The tiny ones? Oh, uh, <laughs> you know, I did Salt Lake to Denver. It's an hour flight. Mm. So it's like, I can hold this an hour, right? And then you get the realization, no, you no. can't. 
It's one of those doors that barely shuts. Oh, uh, and like the, you pull your leg. The accordion and you, yeah. door. Oh, it's the worst. And then those your, are lock. Your knee hits the door. And you're like, fuck, I can yeah. barely fit in this thing. Yeah. All right, more top dog. He's so good. Is that you like Nick Sherman? Well, I like I like the double ply Sherman. <laughs> yeah. You know, because your fingers don't go through it like they can with the single ply. <laughs> yeah. You know, Does so this mean, way. Yeah, your finger, your, uh, your finger doesn't go through the paper you're talking about, right? On the double ply, no, no. It's, it, it, you know, so you don't have to worry about it. This way, if you get your wash your hands, you really don't have to worry about it. If you don't. But with the single ply, you really, you know, you really kind of have to wash your hands. <laughs> That's such a time waster, right? He's really opposed to washing yeah. your hands. Do you hate washing your hands after you take a shit? Well, I wash my hands if other people are in the restroom because I want them to think I'm, you know, civilized. Yeah. But a lot of times I don't. You know, if I'm in a hurry, if I'm in a hurry, I, I don't. But I did today, I think, but not every time. <laughs> What? what um what happened today when you were you, you said you went or was it today or yesterday you went to mass? It was yesterday. It was yesterday. I don't know what if I ate something, but I was um you know I was really gassy yesterday. <laughs> oh, gosh. Right. But uh, so what happened? Was, tell me the story. Well, you know I'm I'm sitting there and all of a sudden I feel that urge, so I head down the hall, mm-hmm. go in there, you know, drop my jars and waiting for. Something and all of a sudden, I thought, you said, gets, the, I thought you said that the bathroom was the door was locked. You had to go use another one. That was uh, that was two days ago. Okay, this is my favorite part: is that he's got so many shit stories that yeah. he had told me one, and then he's actually telling me a, a, another one, and I have to actually put him back on track and blending go, together. Yeah, I'm like, I thought you said he goes, oh, that was two days ago. Never, this is a different and story. Look at you, shit detective. Yeah, getting your facts straight. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Oh, the two. Oh, that was terrible. So I'm downstairs, <laughs> and I'm running behind schedule in the morning, and so okay. all of a sudden as I'm getting out of the car. I feel the urge. I got to take a dump. <laughs> so I'm, I'm at my office, but I'm outside my office in the parking lot. Okay. So so I'm right making the, I gotta, right, yeah, oh, I got to go. So I make a beeline for the downstairs bathroom, and somebody's. It's a one staller. <laughs> You know, handicapped, of course, stall, and somebody's in there. Wait, so then so I have you, when, right when I wait, 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 wait. He's, you panic? Well, I, I'm sitting there squeezing my cheeks, okay, <laughs> and I turn around and, and have to take the elevator. I can't walk up the stairs to the second floor because I'm afraid it might blast out. So I have to. I'm getting in the waiting for the elevator. Squeeze isn't this amazing That's that it's, it's like your story of today? Yes, it's like Top Dog and I are you have, soulmates. And the thing is, you didn't hear this. No. The, the listeners don't know. No. You, she had never heard this. This is my first time hearing this audio. Yeah. I had no idea no that No idea Top Dog the, sense, the content or anything. We're leading parallel lives right now. Absolutely. See, the, the thing is, when the people that complain about Brown, let me tell you something. Brown is universal. It is. Everybody browns. Everybody browns. Yeah, I can't believe Top Dog has to clench his cheek. Do you think you fit? Because I pictured him physically using his hands oh, I've to seen mash him. No, his cheeks shut. I've seen him. He waddles. He waddles like a <laughs> penguin. He's like, oh, 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 I got to go. I got to go. Move, move, move. Yeah. That's what I do, too. Oh, man. Oh, okay. It, it might blast out. So I have to, I'm getting in the, waiting for the elevator, squeezing my cheeks. Right. And then I, the elevator comes. I open up the, the, you know, go to the upstairs bathroom, which is a two two staller. Okay. And I am squeezing as hard as I can. <laughs> but then you got to turn around, undo your belt, and then you got the, if, you know, when you get wear a suit pants, you got that other button in there, and yeah. I can feel it start to come out. <gasps> really, it was coming out. Uh, yeah. And so I got those pants down, <laughs> sat on there, and just bombs away. Okay. Oh my god. And. Then, then I get you know I get out my toilet paper. You know how you take the first wipe just to see how much is there, how yeah, many. Yeah, totally. And I said, yeah. Oh God, th- this is going to be like a whole roll of toilet paper. <laughs> so it was a it was a mess. Oh, it's a mess. So I'm sitting there. I'm just not. I mean, I'm on my like my fourth wipe, and I still got a long way to go. So then, then I, then I stood up and I went out, I went out to the, the you know in the bathroom there, and had, of course I got my underwear down around my pa- my ankles. And I grab so a couple. You walk you walk yeah. to the to the sink like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. Do you understand what he did? Oh my god! Do you know what he did in I... a public restroom? Yeah. He went from the stall. 
Yeah. With his pants and his underwear down by his ankles, walked out to the sink to wet some paper. Yeah. So somebody, anybody could have walked in. It was a two-stall bathroom and seen my dad <laughs> dicking balls out, <laughs> underwear around his ankles, just being like, I'm just wetting some paper. I got a white, <laughs> got a real messy one here. But for some reason, if you walked in on Top Dog doing that, yeah. you'd be like, all right, man. No, you'd get it. Yeah, It wouldn't like, even phase me. I'd be like, yeah. Yeah. He's, you got to like, do that. Real messy in here. Yeah. Totally. Because I needed to, I hadn't finished cleaning. So I got a couple of those uh, towels, you know, those paper towels, and I wetted them up. <laughs> and then I cleaned off. And then, of course, you want to make sure you had black underwear on. This is crazy. You don't know if whether you got any. This is so crazy. I'm just preparing you if you're like of, you know, an uneasy stomach, if you can't handle extremes, real shit. Real talk. Real brown talk. You might want to tune out with what he's about to say. You know, stuff on your underwear. Yeah. So I kind of, I kind of, kind of bent over and sniffed my underwear, and it was clean, so I, it was good to go. Ah. Yeah. You really sniffed your underwear? Sure, because I wanted to make sure if I got any. I couldn't tell because it was black underwear on. Oh my god! Usually, if it's white underwear, you can see whether you got something on it. Oh. How often do you do that? How do you throw your underwear? Well, it depends. You know. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I forget which wear. Because, you know, a lot of my underwear I just kind of throw on the floor of the house. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. Sometimes, I I mean, I I, I don't really do that very much. I I really don't do that very much because I had black underwear. You can tell with white underwear whether you got... Any you know sunset in the pants, so to speak. You, you see know. that brown, but yeah, but you can't. This yeah. this is the trouble with black underwear. <laughs> yeah, that is. so you know, um, this was a big load that you let off. So it sounds like, huh? Oh yeah, it was. It was. It was breakfast. Now, and lunch. what would have happened? What would have happened? Let's say you had gone to the second bathroom and the door was locked. What would have happened then? It could have been. It could have been ugly. You would have seen your pants. Ooh. I think I, I think I don't think I could have held it. I think it would have been, yeah. <laughs> it actually happened in the Orlando airport once. <laughs> you see your pants? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> that actually happened in the uh, Orlando airport. He, he said it like a war story. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Like in Hanoi. He was like, yeah, that yeah. actually has happened one time before. The Orlando, the Orlando Airport. And I go, you see your pants? He goes, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't, does your mom do his laundry? Um, Yeah. Dude, she has to see the smitter. She sees a lot of brown and yellow, for sure. Oh. <laughs> Dude, that's so fucked up. Yeah. No wonder she probably buys him the black ones, because she's like, I cannot <laughs> look at your white. Hey, your brown, yellow. Yeah. I think it would have been, yeah. It actually happened in the <laughs> Orlando Airport once. You see your pants? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had to get on the airplane. Oh. You know, and I had a little... Where did I, you what, see your pants? Like, yeah, well, in the Orlando Airport. And so what I had to do... Yeah, so I had to take... Like, well, I, I mean, I was, you know, just had to go. I couldn't get there in time. So a little bit. So what I had to do in the, in the stall, this is true. I mean, I had to take my underwear off to clean up. And I had to put, the, you know, I, so I had to fly with no underwear. Oh my God! That's and, not tough. And, oh, I did. I had a little bit of a stain in my khaki <laughs> black, but I had no other. Could you know? I checked my luggage. <laughs> so, you know, I was thinking, <laughs> thinking the poor person that sat in my in my seat after I sat in it. Uh, you know, had oh, no man. idea what they were in for. Oh God! Oh, I'm about to throw up. Oh, uh, man. <clears throat> yeah, I actually was like, hey, where's this Orlando airport story coming? I didn't realize it was at the tail end of that. Right. But yeah, that's that's quite the story, Dad. Um, that's the famous, you know, because now I remember he was telling the story about all, shitting at the office, and then it prompted the Orlando story from him, which leads us into the next episode, actually. <laughs> episode 46. Uh, I've heard this story many times. Um, if you talk about shitting with my dad, it's absolutely one of his favorite topics. And 
if you are talking to a, a shit expert like that and you happen to ask, hey, do you know the biggest shit you ever took with my father? The answer is immediate. Miami. <laughs> um, and it was on a family vacation. I remember that specifically, and he must have told it um, on this call. So it's uh, this one is, is quicker. We can jump into it and see what, uh, what the details of the biggest shit he ever took. My in my seat after I sat in it, you know, I had no idea what they were in for. He was telling. What is this now? He was talking about when he the Orlando airport. Yeah, he shit himself at there, and then he he didn't have any underwear, and it still was on his pants. No, God. <laughs> yeah, you got some really smelly dumps too, man. Oh, but the all-time record. See, <laughs> this is this is the rise. Right the Orlando so, airport. I was just, you know making the observation that he really does have some smelly dumps. He goes into the fact, he just launches into a memory. Okay, I'll just let it play. Oh, but the all-time record, 1986, Miami, Florida. (laughs) You were just a little kid then. We were down there. (laughs) You remember this shit? Oh, yes, my all-time biggest one. He remembers it like a... 1984? 1986. We took the whole family. You were just a little kid, three years old. Okay, by the way, 1986, yeah. three years old, he said I was. Mm. I was born in 79, just giving you He's thinking of somebody heads else. Up. Heads up, I was can seven. I, can I tell you? Yeah. Before we go any further, yeah. your father has told me this story probably five times already. Has he really? Oh, I know. I know. it. He tells me this every time Hold I on. see him in okay, Florida. Don't, don't. No, I'm not going to give it away. It's fantastic. What in the fuck? He told you this five times? Dude, the first time I met him, he told me the story. He's the best. I know. How awesome That's why that? we're married. God. We took the whole family. You were just a little kid, three years old. Seven. We're driving. <laughs> we rented a dude. car. We were down in Bell Harbor. We were staying there, Miami Beach, and we were, I don't know, and I had to go. And... I still, to this day, remember that. Remember that shit? Oh, my God. What, was, what did you eat, you think? That triggered? Well, I think it was the fact that we were flying, driving, you know, doing all the family meals on the road kind of stuff, mm-hmm. sitting yeah. in the car, you know, so it kind of just built up in there. And then it just, mm-hmm. <laughs> when it was time, it was time. Travel days do that to me. Like tra- tra- yeah, travel does that. You know, I mean, I- I'm as regular as clockwork. I mean, when it was time, it was time. That's <laughs> you know, you know, he, a nice, he it's an elegant way of putting that. It is. It, he, he recollected the story like it was a Vietnam fondly, tale. Yeah. very much so. Yeah, me and me and the guys were in Hanoi. Yeah, tra- yeah. Feeling. Travel does that. You know, I mean, I- I'm as regular as clockwork. I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm like an atomic clock in the morning. I know exactly. 8.15. What time do you usually share in the morning? 8.15. Oh, yeah, 8.15. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you seem pretty sure about that. But it is. It's within, really, seriously, it's within a minute or two every morning. You can set your watch by the time I go. You really could. So yeah. if I call you at 8.15 tomorrow, can, I, can we have a phone call while you're shitting? Oh, yeah, we could do that. I could give you a blow-by-blow, white-by-white description. <laughs> Okay, all right, Dad. I gotta get ready, man. I love you. I love you, buddy. Bye. Oh, he's okay, so bye. sweet. There you go. There he is, Top Dog. Um, yeah, pretty good. If you like sex, you'll love BlueChew.com. dot com. Who doesn't like sex? Don't you want to have more of it and be super hard while you're doing it? Yeah, man. BlueChew.com dot com is affiliated with physicians who work with you to find the dosage and active ingredient that is best for you. The chewables from Blue Chew can be taken on a full or empty stomach. See, that part doesn't matter. It's just what's below your stomach that gets super hard that matters most. And um, yeah, the online physician consult is free, so it is cheaper than those other two. Viagra and Cialis. It only takes a few minutes to connect with a BlueChew.com affiliated physician and if you qualify, you get prescribed online quickly. What is better than that? Here's a great deal for you guys. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first order free when you use promo code YMH. Just pay $5 in shipping. That's B-L-U-E-C-H-E-W.com. The promo code is YMH. 
This episode of Your Mom's House is brought to you by Mercari. We all have extra stuff lying around or hidden away in a closet that isn't being used anymore. A lot of it is probably in great condition, and someone else could get a ton of use out of it. Um, So why not do something with that? That's why we use Mercari, the marketplace app that makes it easy to give unused items a new life when I get rid of them. So it's a simple way to say goodbye by selling your stuff to someone who actually wants it. And when a buyer says, hello, you make some good money. Once you download Mercari, you just have to take pics of your stuff, add a description, and it's listed. When it's sold, Mercari makes it easy by emailing you a shipping label so you can box it up, your item, and you send it to its new home. Super easy, super great way to, you know, sell something that is not getting use anymore in your home. Your stuff might be exactly what someone else is looking for, so turn your goodbye into their hello on Mercari. Start buying and selling when you download today from the app stores or at Mercari.com. That's M-E-R-C-A-R-I, Mercari, your marketplace. So yeah, two, those are two of his, his all-time classic stories, the Orlando Airport and the Miami record-setting shit that he knows happened in 1986 and he often fondly recalls was your dad like that by chance was he did your dad tell shit stories um he didn't really tell us stories of memorable shits no but it was like kind of he did have an open door policy when he shot he did Mm -hmm. like if you ever needed something from him like it'd be like uh hey where's dad he's like oh he's in the bathroom go get go get what you need from him because he would take like hour-long shits hour-long it was just like that was just a part of his day so it would he would be in there a while. Yeah, he'd be in there for a minute, and then like if you need it, like everyone was just used to his shit smell, and it was bad. Ugh. Yeah. What it, I mean, I I think that he'd always have a newspaper that was strategically placed, and like that he would read, like, read, you know? yeah, 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 the whole fucking thing he's reading though. Yeah, and like he would try and like hide his cock and balls from his kids, but I mean, I think we all kind of yeah could drop from memory at this point. I wonder if that's just like a dad being like. This is the only escape I have left kind of thing. You know what I mean? For your dad to be like, I'm going to be in here an hour. Um, Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, he was raising, he was a father of four kids. So yeah. I feel like. That's what I'm saying. Though. That's it's definitely like, what it was. So then you guys would like knock on the door like, hey, dad, are you going to take us to whatever? And he's like, when I'm done. Right. And like this was even before cell phones. So he was, he just had a newspaper to, to entertain, which I can't even fathom at this point. But I mean, that just shows you <laughs> how important that time was to work. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> He's just doing it to like have a space. Do you find yourself doing that too now that you have two kids? I mean, I definitely look at the time that I have to go as permission to escape. Yeah. And like they're at the age, you know, sometimes they'll just pound on the door or open the door and they're like, hey, and you're like, what, dude? What? You know? And, and they're so young. Ooh, you, le- you let them in? Well, I I mean, sometimes the incessant knocking, you're like, what do you want? Do you ever see the smell knock them back a little bit? Never. Never. Mm-hmm. Doesn't really register. Well, I think. Yeah, maybe they're not afraid of that smell yet. Maybe that smell just means dad to them now. Yeah. They're young, though. A couple more years, they're going to be like, ugh. Mm. You know. But yeah, they're pretty young. Um, We're jumping ahead here. Episode 225. This is... A conversation I've had with my dad many times, and the fact that I got him to share it with an audience is pretty spectacular. It's about the fact that he he he's always very in tune with what his farts smell like, and the reason is because he knows that they inform him about what's going to happen next, and and he must have shared it on this call. That's what it says in the description. So from episode 225, let's go right ahead. Hey, Dad. Hey, buddy. How you doing? (laughs) Good. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. What's uh, what's going on? Yeah. Well, I just had a... My new um, favorite lunch now is this seafood cob salad. Okay. It's got shrimp and crab meat, spinach. (laughs) Spinach. He's like breathing so hard into the phone. <laughs> like it's such a this is such a noisy call. I'm already irritated. Go ahead. But I like the non-organic kind. Okay. 
Non organic spinach? Not a, yeah. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because uh, the pesticides and chemicals help kill the bacteria um, that could normally come from Do you realize this is his form of rebellion, right? Yeah, he's sticking it to the man. Yeah, yeah. He loves that like people want organic, so he goes, I don't want organic. Yeah. yeah. Keeping it old school, I like it. Oh boy. Organic, so I feel like it's safer to eat stuff that's been treated with pesticides than it is not the E. coli. Now, those chemicals kill a lot of the bacteria. So That's nice. I, I, I go down the, you know, I'm kind of built up an immunity for pesticides anyway, so I feel safer with, with chemicals. Yeah, that's great, Dad. It's good. That's really good. You know, yeah, and save money, too, because, you know, all that organic shit costs... Yeah, it's expensive. And the, now when your sister comes home, of course, you have, you know, everything's organic in the house but the grass, okay? Right. You know, because she's into all that God. modern, you know, Jesus. stuff. But a lot what of heavy breathing going it? on. <laughs> it, like, it's been like 10 years since I've heard. I'm, it's the breathing. The fucking breathing is making me insane. I don't know if I can get through this call. <laughs> we haven't even gotten to any of the uh, face button mashings yet. Remember that? Yes. <laughs> but the breathing used to really irritate me. So my dad, I used to call him at his office, you know, when he was working. And every time I'd be like, you know, like, hey, dad, he'd go, yeah. And I go, hey, like after I go, do, do you mind not breathing into the phone? He goes, it's how I breathe. And I go, but you're, you know that you're breathing into the mouthpiece. Like you hear it. If you're talking on a phone, like a, a you know, an office phone and you breathe into the mouthpiece, you hear the air. He's like, it's just how I breathe. I'm like, God damn it, dude. All right, go ahead. Sorry. Can we say it? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> A lot of heavy breathing going on. What is wrong? And then he kind of laughs at it here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, so you told me last week that you farted on the way to work oh. and then you knew what kind of shit you were going to take. I did. You know, <laughs> if if you get to know your farts over, <laughs> you know, I mean, if you think about how many shits I've taken in my life, we're talking, mm. you know, well over 100,000, okay? So you get to know. Yeah. <laughs> well over 100,000? I don't know about that. Well, let's see here. <laughs> you take, let me see how many days I've been alive here. Let me work this out. That's a good point. Okay. Yeah. So you figure 365 times 67. I've been alive 24,455 days. Yeah. And oh, okay. I probably, you know, count a child of four shits a day. Probably, this is 97,000. So I'm probably coming up on my, you know, in the next year or two, my 100,000 shit. Okay. <laughs> okay. I never thought about that. That's great. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> Really excited about it. <laughs> uh, something to look forward to. Another milestone. Okay. Okay. So, but I can tell. <laughs> I can tell by the odor whether it's going to be a, you know, a brick, mm -hmm. or it's going to be a sloppy Joe. I can tell. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. And then, how was it when you the other day when you said you farted in the car on the way to work? It was. It was a six. I knew it was going to be a six. You knew it was. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> How did you know? I, I just know the the you know the smell, and I know each level has its own unique. Uh, you know, there's kind of a the higher you go up in the number, there's kind of a rancid smell when when they're when they're more solid. <laughs> I'm gonna throw it's up. <laughs> God, I can't believe your mom lays this guy oh. for forty years. <laughs> So intense. Of a more benign, less stinky smell. It's so work too. <laughs> one that doesn't smell much at all is probably going to be a one or two, sometimes a three. Okay. Okay. But when you get some ugly smells that you're up there in the, you know, six, seven, and eight range. There's no eight. You've created eight. I mean, six, five, five. Well, five, six, and seven range. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm just, I can just, you know. It's, it's like some people can, you look at artists that draw and you say, how do you do that? And they just do, they have a kind of a, an art. I, I'm the same way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can do it. Um, so the other thing is, uh, 
you called me and you said you had, you're like, you know, I've been thinking about, and I had no idea what you were going to say. And you said, I was thinking that morning shits don't smell as bad as shits during the day. Oh, they yeah. don't. They don't. They <laughs> absolutely do not. But that's that. so your theory is that the morning shit is the least odorous of the shits that you could take during the day. Absolutely. Positively. Yes. But my whole thing is that like, you could have some real fire before you go to bed, you know, eat something pretty intense that just cooks in you all night. And then you could take a, a really stinky shit in the morning. Right. Am I right about that? Am I, I, I agree. My, I beg to differ with your father on this topic and I, it's very controversial, but I have a feeling my morning dumps are the smelliest of the day. Hmm. I, I, because they've been festering inside of you all night. That's my, that's my, the logic. Yeah. Of it, I think. No, I agree with you on this one, Tommy. Hmm. Mm. Well, <laughs> I generally don't uh, eat something with fire before I go to bed. Well, I don't mean fire as in spice. I just mean that, like, yeah, something. Yeah, but I think it, it takes longer cuts time. Me Remember, off. what you had at dinner time, it, uh, it takes a while. It depends on how fast your digestive process is. But, uh, you know, for the most part, there's stuff that's, you know, in the, in the assembly line. Before, you know, if I had something late at night, there's a lot of stuff that are coming to the end of the train station. See what I mean? So I, I still <laughs> metaphor today. See what I mean? Metaphor when I rich. talked about how you sitting there and the first words out of your mouth is, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? No, the hell we <laughs> don't. You ain't say anything yet. I, I don't know what you're saying and I don't know and what I you don't mean. I don't know what you mean. More, more fart talk, top dog. I still think that, uh, that probably wouldn't apply to me. Okay. So you're saying for you, Mornings are not as bad. Yeah. Oh, mornings are fairly benign, yeah. Yeah, you, if I'm going to go, you know, I'll have one, uh, you know, sometimes the early afternoon ones or sometimes the, the early evening ones, too, can be, can be, uh, you know, for some reason, that, that that's a period sometimes when I can, you know, the time that I farted in the movie theater, the whole row behind me moved. I told you about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm serious. They just got up and left. Okay, it was dead. <laughs> He's so proud. I've uh, left. I've left the movies with you before. That's true. That's true. Yeah, you have. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, because... yeah. You looked at me. Yeah. Uh. But you came back. You did come back after. <laughs> you know. Yeah. You came back. I came. You know? I did come back, but. I, I drove that night, so you came back. <laughs> I've left hotel rooms that you were in before. Yes, yes, I've seen you. I've seen you go down to uh, downstairs to you know whatever, just kind of get some air outside. And yeah, but if you're in a good hotel that's got a good ventilation system, that stuff clears out pretty fast. Not true. Not with him. No way. Not no. with dad shits. No, dad farts and dad shits are a Dude, whole other level. Dads are full of bad smells. There's dad mouth. All dad mouths are disgusting. Horrific. Dad farts linger. Dad shits. Dude, my dad <laughs> takes those morning dumps. The whole fucking house smells like his shit. Yeah. It doesn't go away. Colbas and beer. Beer, yeah. Colba sausage, uh, ranto touche. I mean, Oof, that's a rancid shit. Yeah, of course. You can smell it. It probably wakes you up. You're Dude, in bed like, what is that? It would drift when I was in high school from under the bathroom. I would smell it into my bedroom. The waft, the smell. Of course, dude. Dad, course. Dads are the grossest human beings. Oh. oh, all right. Something to keep in mind. Yep. You know. Yep. 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 I'm all excited <laughs> about planning our trip to Canada next summer. This is a big thing he's been on. We're going to do, he wants to go on a fishing trip. Oh, yeah? Where are you guys going to go? I don't know. Somewhere in Canada. Yeah, that'll be fun. We'll have a good time. Yeah. Go up there and, and, uh, <laughs> and that's way up there. But I figure if I don't do it now, we'll never do it. That's, yeah, that's true. So we'll, we'll definitely you know? do that. We'll definitely do and that. And it's something that, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, we'll see some bears. Well, two of you. Mm -hmm. You know? And, uh, Canada is a pretty country. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. I love going up there. It really there. is. It, it, it's it's a uh, it's amazing how uh, how attractive and diverse Canada is from the east and the west. 
Hopefully, yeah. when we're up in uh, Canada, we'll see some road beef too. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. That'll be great, buddy. Some That'll Canadian, some Canadian pussy. Yeah, <laughs> you know I haven't. Uh, you don't see a lot of blondes in Canada, though, do you? Um. Yeah, you do. I mean, you really? I mean, they have the they have the full variety. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he, the gentleman prefers blondes. I see. I don't know. I guess so. Hmm. I guess so. Yep. Like father, not, like son. Not too many in Vietnam when he was there. Must have been a dry. <laughs> nah, it's not a fun time. Dry time for him. Now blondes over there. Shit, buddy. By the way, this this reminds me. So many people think it's. I'm saying road beef all the time. It's road beef. B e a v e beaver. Road right. beef. And uh, not road beef. The funniest thing about the call and you saying road beef is yeah. I th- I could have sworn Top Dog heard that and it didn't register, but he di- he just tried to play it off. Right. And then later on, circles back. He's like, "Oh yeah, I'd love to see some Canadian blonde." So it's like, "Oh, he he read you a hundred percent." Oh my god, unbelievable! That guy really likes talking about shit. If you haven't, I mean, it has since infected me. You know, like I talk about it, but I think you can like if you were going to do a study on me and you're like, what's the origin? Why? Why is he like this? It's like, look at look how he was raised. (laughs) You know, I'm just lucky that he wasn't like an abusive (laughs) asshole. He just wanted to talk about taking a dump all the time. Um, All right. So now we're, we're jumping a little further ahead into some video era stuff. I don't know. 339. This is the episode we're going to jump into. I'm guessing I'm probably 50 pounds heavier. Um, This episode had a call with my dad where he talks about having a squirter and it gets on the bedspread. Because I, I, as I recall, he was just like, I got some shit on my, on the sheets, on the bedspread. And I was like, what? And then I want to say, he's like, ah, you just, you you can just flip the, the cover over and then you don't have to worry about it. Like, you don't want to get out of bed and like clean everything. <laughs> He's like, huh. All right. So here it is from episode 339 Top Dog and his shit the sheets. Hello. Hey, Dad. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, how's it going, man? Good. I'm good. Hey, um, so I, did, I don't know. I didn't really get a chance to talk to you, but Saturday morning, <laughs> I was sitting in our kitchen and we were having a little breakfast. And actually, Christina went to use the bathroom and while I was in the kitchen I went to fart and it was just all water that came out of me oh shit that happened to me that night in bed in bed yeah didn't I tell you no oh I I had a I had a squirter in bed and got on the uh, the bedspread (laughs) and I had to oh yeah you know hey wait a minute were you in bed like going ready to go to sleep no, I was just laying there watching an afternoon TV show, you know. What were you wearing? Yeah, I was kind of in a, well, I had my boxers, but I was kind of a weird position. So my boxers were, you know, and. Were and, kind of and open? Just kind of, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. And, and it kind of, some got on my underwear, but some squirted. Wait. And, oh, my God. It's like a, <laughs> like a spray. <laughs> so, so did you. So I had five, five or six spots on, on the. Uh, <laughs> Bedspread, so I had to take the bedspread off and put it in the washing machine. <laughs> Wait, now, how come you didn't think it's just a little bit of shit? Because one time you sharted Miscal- in your- Just a miscalculation on my part. Now, wait, did you... So you thought you were farting. You thought it would just be a fart? Oh, I thought I was farting for sure. Did, yeah. you, did you push kind of aggressively? No, no. That's what got me. It didn't. It just kind of... You know, I mean, I knew it was... You know, you kind of gave it that little last minute nudge you know yeah but yeah 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 and how <laughs> how much was it because it sounds like sounds like a lot well there's a lot more i didn't realize that it would <laughs> seem like a little fart had you know had a lot more there you know yeah i mean yeah. it's spotty you know it wasn't tons but it was yeah. spotty yeah. enough that i had to change my underwear and change the whole bedspread yeah so you had to go wash that bedspread the whole thing yeah <laughs> yeah did she did, did you tell charles yeah did you tell charles what happened I didn't until the next day, and then uh, she, oh, she wanted to know what 
the bedspread was doing it in the washing machine. And I said, told her what happened. She said, well, did you clean the spots before you put it in? I said, no. <laughs> I just, I just put it in there. Oh, it'll get all over everything. No. <laughs> That's what the rinse cycle is for. So wait, how did you tell her? <laughs> how did you tell her what happened? Like, what's the way you tell her that? Uh, oh, by the way, I had a, a little bit of a thought I was farting and it kind of came blasting out. So I got it on the bedspread and I had to wash the bedspread. <laughs> what did she think about you know, that? She, well, you know, she doesn't really like to engage in these kind of conversations. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, so didn't you tell me I got that you had one the other day. You said that like it really curled up into the toilet or something. Well, I had, I had the, uh, it looked like a snake the other day. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, look, it looked like a rattler with no rattler, you know? Yeah. Just kind of coiled up inside. I had one of those. But let me tell you what happened today. I came back to the office, had a park you know, under a tree, had a fart, and then, you know, got out of the car, shut the door, engine was off. When I came back an hour and a half later, the smell was still in the car. I couldn't believe it. Wow, that is really <laughs> well, something. If you, you think about it, there's no, you know, nothing, no air can get in the car. So you right. just kind of sit there. You trapped yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, it was trapped, mm. you know, kind of settles in a little bit. You know, it's like somebody <laughs> smokes a cigarette in the car. Yeah. Just the door, you can tell they were smoking. Okay? I think you have more intense farts than most people, though. <laughs> oh, I do. Yeah. I do. And I've, I've modified my diet lately. You know, I've, I'm on this uh, eating fish every day, kick shrimp and orange roughy, uh, trying to lose some weight. And so I'm off to red meat. Yeah. And of course, that immediately, immediately changed the uh, texture and, uh, and the smell of my fur. Everything changed. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised, honestly, that you washed the sheet only because it, you told me real clearly one time that, you know, when you, you sharded a little bit in your pants, I said, don't you want to put those down? You said, your quote was, it's just a little bit of shit. Well, your mother has to sleep on the bed, Fred. Oh, and okay. there is a spot there. So you, you know, wouldn't... I mean, I couldn't... If you were alone, you wouldn't have washed it? I just would have folded the bed spread over and covered it up, okay? <laughs> this way, nobody could tell, okay? Yeah. Because you have also... Oh, my God. You have, like, the... Uh, <laughs> If you're going to work out, you have kind of that underwear policy where even if it has a little brown streak, you can, you can put them inside out, right? Yeah, well, I do that. Yeah, I, yeah, sure. <laughs> but don't you think that's sure, kind of know. gross? Well, no, because I'm an environmentalist. I'm trying to, you know, <laughs> trying to save on water, you know? Because I saw a chocolate stain on one, and you just put them inside out. Oh, God. That's true. That's true. I've done that before. Yeah. Because I'm too lazy to just get a... Besides, you know, when you go to the gym, it's going to get dirty and everything, so you might as well just go all the way. Do you know what level of barbarian you are for doing that? Like, that is really, really horrendous. <laughs> Does Charo thing. know that? No. Does Charo know you do that? No. No, no, no. No. No, uh, no. no there, there, are certain, there, there are certain things. You know this business where you need to tell your wife, you know, we're in love, we're going to share everything with with each other. Yeah. You know, some things the guys just don't want to share with women and it's not about other women. Let me tell you. Yeah. I mean, I got to <laughs> say though, nothing excites me more than the possibility of mom hearing that story <laughs> just to see her level of disgust would be hilarious. It would be amazing. Really amazing. No, she, she'll say something. She actually said one time, I don't know where I met you. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious, man. Um, do you remember your uh, your movie theater fart? Oh, it was one of my proudest moments. Was that, you think, a meat-related fart? You know, I think it was just eating a lot of stuff. Probably, I think it was a holiday fart because, oh, you know, oh, yeah. yeah, those are real. A lot of holiday food, and you know, the people were it's in the AMC theater. People sitting right behind me, let one go. I mean, they picked up and moved five seats over. Yeah. No kidding. Not yeah. exaggerating yeah. with this one. Yeah. Not exaggerating. You that's, know? Yeah. That's, uh, you know, kind of gave, kind of gave it that, you know, a little, 
another notch in my belt look. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It, was, it was really yeah. something. Well, look, Dad, um, I'll give you a call a little bit later, okay? Okay, buddy. You All take right, care. Dad. All bye, right. Bye. Bye-bye. 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 You don't want to do what I have to do, which is shave my head every few days. That's why I look like this, because I waited. I waited when I should have acted. I don't want you to do, be the same position that I'm in. 66% of men start to lose their hair by age 35, and once you've started notice thinning hair, it can be too late. Is that hairline slowly starting to move backwards? Any bald spots yet? The best way to prevent more hair loss is to do something about it while you still have some. Go to 4 a one-stop shop, for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men, it's time to write a new chapter, one in which you have hair. There are no snake oil pills or gas station supplements. These are prescription solutions backed by science. No more awkward in-person doctor visits or long pharmacy lines. Today, Hims is giving you their best offer yet. If you're not happy with your results after 90 days, Hims will give you a full refund. And right now, our listeners can get their first visit absolutely free. Go to 4 slash mom. That's 4 slash mom. Prescription products require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if prescription is appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Remember, that's 4 slash mom. Hey, it's a new year, finally. So let's try to start it off right. If trying to save some extra cash is on your mind, think about reshopping your home and auto insurance rates with Policy Genius. You could save up to $1,055 per year with help from their licensed experts. Think about what you could do with the money you save. You could invest it, buy something, put it in a savings account, whatever you want. The possibilities are endless. Here's how it works. First, you head over to policygenius.com, answer a few quick questions about yourself and your property, then Policy Genius does the rest. They'll compare rates from over 30 top insurers, from Progressive to Nationwide. They find you the lowest quotes, and their licensed experts will look at the ways, the best ways to maximize your savings, including bundling your home and auto policies. If they find a better rate than what you're currently paying, they will get you switched for free. That's the kind of service that has earned Policy Genius a five star rating across 1,600 reviews. If you're a homeowner, make 2021 the year you save up to $1,055 by simply reshopping your home and auto insurance. Just go to policygenius.com to get started right now. Policy Genius, when it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. Well, there you go. Sometimes you shit the sheets. What are you going to do? Um, yeah, I mean, and by the way, we're skipping multiple episodes as we do this. There's, there's just too many um, of my dad, and they're almost all about shitting. Um, this is this has my other favorite lane of my dad, which which is him laughing at like street jokes, and we discovered this that he really, really, I mean I, I I remember this as a kid, and then I think as an adult to process it, it was ridiculous. But the way he laughs at blonde jokes and Polish, and he thinks like those old school jokes are just the best. One time I went to lunch with him and an old friend, like so my dad's now. 72 73 this but this would have been when he was like let's say i don't know 67 and this guy was like 85 and we sit down for lunch and the guy starts telling me these like joke book jokes he's like 85 years old so i'm doing like polite laughter and stuff and he's like let's hear some of yours and i go what do you mean he's like let's hear your jokes like that and i go oh no i don't i don't have like you know, how many Polacks does it take? And he was like, what do you do? I, he, he was like, your dad said you're a comedian. I was like, well, yeah, but do you think that comedians do that? And he was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh. I, did, I, could, I He literally was like, I don't understand what you do, though. Um, but that, my dad just loves the blonde jokes, dumb blonde jokes. Oh, man. And if you see him and you bring it up, he'll tell you the same three over and over and over. And so this call, we get some some jokes, and uh, also uh, we get a little war talk. A little top dog war talk, which is his other favorite lane. Let's uh, yeah, let's get into it. Episode three fifty eight. Yeah. Hello, Charo. Yes. Hi, it's your son. <laughs> this is the funny thing. Your father was going to answer. I said, Tom. I want to block that call, so let me answer. 
I used the salesman, and I, because I saw two, one, two, so I said hello, Charo. Tommy, I will almost block you. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you didn't. Tommy was Tommy. So. Hey, can you uh, turn down that TV for a second? <laughs> Daddy, can you turn on your TV? <laughs> hey, uh, I need to ask Dad something real quick. Can, can you pass him the okay. phone? Do you mind? Okay, hold on. Okay, thanks. It's so loud. Why is it so loud? Hey, buddy. Hey, what's up, Dad? Oh, just sitting there watching the Olympics. Yeah, good time? Having fun? Oh, yeah. It's amazing how... Uh, how great the Americans are doing and how poorly the Chinese are doing relative to uh, population. Beijing. Yeah. Well, but you know, they did pretty, the Chinese did really well in the, when they had the Olympics there, but you know, uh, I haven't seen much. cheaters is what you're saying, right? Well, you know, I think the, 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 the cheaters really turned out to be uh, the Russians, you know, they uh, banned a hundred and some odd Russians. Yeah. The entire weightlifting team, and all but, I think, uh, one or two track and field people. Wow. Huh. That's pretty significant. Hey, um, how many people do you think you killed overall? <laughs> well, uh, rolls into you it. know, I'm not really sure. I mean, that was um, not really sure. Do you have a guess, like a rough guesstimate? <laughs> oh, probably three. Really? What? Really? Maybe. That's Maybe. Not... Why not more? Maybe. Well, officers do most of the, um, you know, you, do, you, you, you basically can control the artillery and stuff. And so sometimes, uh, you know, and the, your troops do most of the shooting. But when you've talked about, you said it's like a euphoric feeling, like the best thing is killing the enemy. You experienced that firsthand. Well... You know, I, I don't like to, you know, that's not something that, that I really would ever want to talk about publicly. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. You like jokes, right? I love jokes. Okay. So I wanted to read some jokes to you and talk, and you tell me what you think of these jokes. Okay. How can you tell when a blonde sends you a fax? Uh, I love blind jokes, by the way. <laughs> I I don't know. It has a stamp on it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love those jokes. Oh, my God, I love blind jokes. Okay. How can you tell if a blonde has been using your computer? I don't know. There's white out all over the monitor. <laughs> Oh my god! I got one for you too. Okay, go go ahead, go ahead. Okay, this blonde is sitting at a a bar in Chicago, watching the yeah you know, they have one of these bars where they had the TV behind the bar, and uh, there's some guy up on the ledge getting ready to jump. So this this guy sits down next to her, and he says to her, you know, "This is the the six o'clock news," and and uh, he says, uh, "I bet you." He jumps, and the blonde says, I bet you a drink he doesn't. And all of a sudden, the guy jumps, and so the, 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 guy, the blonde says, I guess I owe you $20. And he said, no, I really can't take the money because I saw it on the 5 o'clock news. And the blonde says, so did I, but I thought he might change his mind. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's hilarious. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's so funny. Can you imagine? Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, that's funny. Um how do you draw how do you drown a blonde? Uh you know, have her stand in the shower for a long time. No. I don't know. I'm just guessing. I don't know. Okay. You just just go, how? Uh, you put a scratch and sniff sticker at the bottom of the pool. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> what did the blonde say when she saw the sign in front of the YMCA? I don't know. 
Look, they spelled Macy's wrong. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Yeah. I got one more blind joke for you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Please keep it coming. Okay, so this blonde, she was going to go from New York to Europe, to London. Yeah. So she just climbed on board and she sat in first class without a first class ticket. And the steward says, I'm sorry, miss, but you're not allowed. You have to go back in coach. She says, I'm blonde, I'm beautiful, and I'm going to London in first class. Well, the steward has never had anybody talk to her like that, so she went to get the co-pilot. The co-pilot came out and said, miss, you got to go to the back of the coach with everybody else. You don't have first class ticket. She goes, I'm blonde, I'm beautiful, and very busty, as you can see. I'm going to London in first class. Well, the co-pilot, he didn't know what to do. So he goes up and tells the captain. The captain says, don't worry, I speak blonde. The captain goes back, whispers something to her ear. She pops up and runs back in the coach. And the other said, what did you say to her? I told her that only coach is going to London. I think that's hilarious. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Thumb broad. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> You're out. <laughs> Thanks, the airplane. You know, it divides itself here. I mean, how dumb can you get? Yeah. <laughs> it's really funny. Actually, I love that joke. Yeah, that's a good Sometimes joke. I just talk. Sometimes I just tell jokes to myself to make myself laugh. <laughs> oh, my God. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Man, that's a lot of... I can see a broad doing that, though, you know? I could. Yeah, yeah the other kind of jokes I like, I like uh, I like Polish jokes. Yeah. Oh, who doesn't? Yeah, sure. All right, all right, these two Polacks are driving down from Cincinnati <laughs> to, to Miami on I-75. 75. Yeah. 75. They saw a sign that says "Clean Restrooms Ahead." Yeah. So the time we got to Miami, they cleaned 150. It's <laughs> <laughs> funny. Actually. That's good. Never heard That's that. That's good. <laughs> hey, um, <laughs> you know what the world? You know what the world's shortest book is? What? <laughs> Polish War Heroes. <laughs> oh yeah, I've heard yeah. that one. Yep. <laughs> the Hungarians used to go um, the Russians. Why do Why do blondes wear panties? <laughs> I have no idea. To keep their ankles warm. <laughs> oh my god wow <laughs> yeah Oof. yeah i love this i love my jokes hey where do you look for for blondes obituaries uh in the sports page no under home improvements That's really funny. God. Oof. <laughs> Oof. That's pretty good, man. Yeah. You know, it's it's you don't know, it's, you know it's you don't do any one liners like this, but this is you some good stuff here, buddy. Um. I love you, you know. I, I'm trying to I, I'm trying to think of some other blonde jokes. You caught me off guard here, but I, I remember one time I just I googled blonde jokes. Um, it work. Yeah. Yeah, I, I must went to twenty or thirty of them. So you think day. I should do these? You think I should start doing these on stage? <laughs> no, I, I actually I think you're much better doing what you do. Really? Okay. Hmm. Uh, oh yeah, because you tell a story, you captivate. Okay. You know the trouble with a blo- with with a short joke is jokes over. Yeah, you need your next no one. Sense. Yeah. Yeah, you know when you do the stories like you do it. Yeah. The, the, sense of anticipation you know it's like okay. jumping out of an airplane you know with no okay. parachute let me okay. tell you some uh, some other ones i've been thinking up um okay ha- how do you sink a polish battleship uh you can just say how you don't have to actually try to answer that it's just a joke i have no idea yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh you put it in water <laughs> you know how you know why how uh you bear <laughs> Let me see how this one goes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what? You know what these two pol these two Polacks decided to bury their father at sea. Yeah. He was, a, and they both drowned in his grave. 
<laughs> that's good. That's good. Why did the Why did the Polak cross the road? Because he wanted to get to the other side. N- no, he couldn't get right. his dick out of the chicken. <laughs> oh, Jesus. oh, God. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm glad you really enjoy it. Now I know how to cheer you up if you're ever in a bad mood. Jesus. Oh, all I have to do. I'm never really in a bad mood much. No, that's okay? true. That is true. I just, you know, all I have to do to entertain myself, actually, is think about all your childhood experiences with me. Oh, Dad, let me t- Bri, I got you one more here. How do you know if you're in front of a Polish firing squad? Oh, good question. Uh, the, the, the guns are faced at the, uh, at Dad, the sky. Dad, 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 <laughs> Dad. Do you not understand right. how these <laughs> jokes work? You're not supposed to actually try to answer them. It's, that's, oh, okay. it's just set up punchline. I, okay. I, I give up. I give up. <laughs> I give up. Okay. Well, this I is how you know you're standing in front of a Polish firing squad. They are standing in a circle. Yeah. Yeah, I heard that one before. Yeah. That's a funny one, actually. Uh, yeah. That's, really kind of, that's a funny one. Oh, God. That is funny. Yeah. Whew. How do you get a Polak out of a bathtub? I don't know. You throw in a bar of soap. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. What do Polaks use Cheerios for? Dad, what do Polaks use Cheerios for? I don't know. Donut seeds. Donut seeds. <laughs> oh my God. I love it. I'm trying to think if I can think of another. Oh, Polish I got a good one for you. It's an Olympic theme. Okay. What do Polacks do with all their gold medals? They don't have any. No. <laughs> what? Like, again. <laughs> like, again. It's just set up a joke. <laughs> I, 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 okay. I don't know. Okay, they go home and get them bronzed. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. All right. Oh, my gosh. This is one of the best conversations of my life. <laughs> oh, I love just laughing, Tommy. I know, Dad. It's, it's, I'm glad I you enjoyed it. Um, all right, I'll give you a call here in a little bit, okay? I got to run for a minute. Okay, buddy. Okay, buddy, love you guys. Right, bye. Right, Amazing guy. I love him. I love him. Um, so happy that that makes him so happy. All right, we're going to jump to an episode now, 464, that has a prank call. Um, so this isn't a call with my father, but it's a call that the great Fart Simpson, uh, who has done amazing, we've shown you uh, how amazing this guy, he's so talented. So here's a prank call that Fart Simpson did with Top Dog as the caller so let's um let's listen to it it's corner to geo hey man my name's tug do you have a second i need to ask you a few questions what's your question there what kind of material you guys use over there for your truck nuts i'm not following you it says on here urethane and uh polysulfide uh is that good to put on skin you know i couldn't tell you because i don't do that Yep. You know, I don't know what they're made out of. Let me see if it even tells me in my computer system. Uh huh. But but those truck nuts, I could, you know, it's hard to say. But let's see here. I'm here in my own garage trying to make my custom truck nuts. And yeah, my daddy's about to pass away. He don't got too much longer to live. Mm-hmm. He's always been a big fan of truck nuts. Yeah. And I figured the best way to commemorate him and to remember. What an awesome man he was, was to just get a nice casting of his balls. Right. Well, I'm not sure. Get your own speakerphone. I got my hands full over here. This is my dad, Top Dog. Hey, buddy. It's Top Dog. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Can I bring up a question here that I have on my mind? What? Boobs. G-boobs are are really gigantic. If you Google G-boobs, you'll find some big boobs, okay? If there's anything my daddy likes more than truck nuts, it'd be G-size sloppers. Those are very rare. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Dad, did you fart? 
It smells that bad? To me, it smells normal. It smells terrible. We all have our, our own fingerprint in the intestines, okay? Uh, yep. Hey, Daddy, remember that time you took a dump on top of that shit pile in the backyard? Oh, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I enjoyed that. There you go. That's an 18-wheeler joke there. Me and my Daddy have a, have a shit pile going on in the backyard. We've had it going for the past year now. Yeah, it was gigantic. Well, that's why they make those manure things that scoop them up. I couldn't and then you got and Then you got one of those little... Uh, what do you call them little wagons that they use to haul that shit away? Oh, David, did you fart again? I can't help it. Mine's just, mine's always spontaneous spur of the moment. <laughs> oh. His balls are hanging through the hammock. They're uh, in a big bowl of plaster. Well, that's one way of hanging around town. Oh, it's an interesting spot. <laughs> oh, shit. It says it's polyurethane is what it says. Daddy, why are you breathing like that? Just the way I breathe. There you go. Hell, if these truck nuts work out, I think I'm going to pursue making uh, one for women. <laughs> You'd be the first. Women drive trucks, too. You might as well hit both sides of the market, you know? Yeah, I don't know how you're going to make those for that, though, but that'd be a good one. I'm thinking about doing truck cuts for ladies. <laughs> 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 Start making truck labia for my grandma. <laughs> well, that's how you're going to have to make the pussy balls and make that work, man. Well, I got to hit it, buddy. Thanks for all the, the help there, bud. You guys have a good one. Wow. That was pretty great. That was another Fart Simpson classic, man. My daddy and truck nuts. Um, he's going to make truck hunts for ladies. And uh, I love that he used, he actually used the um, the time, like, from the call where my dad was like, just the way I breathe. When I was like, stop fucking breathing into the phone. It's just the way I breathe. <laughs> no, it's not. Why can't, well, like, why can't you just go like that? Because you know that you're doing it with your nose. So just, like, move the mouthpiece down. It's just the way I breathe. Okay. All right. Thanks, man. Um... Anyway, he's the best. I love him. This is our, our special Top Dog Pared Down episode. This could have gone on and on and on and on. Um, so hopefully, this ep- the next time we record, we'll be together, right? Or no? I mean, hopefully. You know, if Christina doesn't break half of her body, I think we, we should be able. I'm pulling up the, uh, the calendar here. There's a good chance, yeah, that we could all come in together. That'd be pretty great. Unless something fucked up happens to one of you guys. <sighs> At this rate, anything's possible. What if man? you get shot, robbed, beaten, stabbed? I don't know. You know? Boy, you're really putting it out there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what if something terrible like that happens? And then we'll show my murder video at the next uh, no. live. <laughs> I've changed. <laughs> what do you mean? I have changed. In what lot. sense? Since my injury, I, I view tragedies and, and human suffering in a completely different light please explain that because i i've seen if anything you've only doubled down on it in what way well i sent you a real fun video over the weekend yeah and then you responded with uh oh so this is what we're doing now we're sending videos to each other that we know the other one won't like and i was like oh my god <laughs> Wait, which one did you send me? I sent you the video with uh, the two fingers that, like, you think it's uh, like, oh, this guy's on vacation, and pretty soon you're gonna see he's gonna like hang out with his wife or whatever, and it just goes, oh like, yeah, straight into the chick's asshole. Yeah, yeah, and he just his fingers are everywhere, and then all over the world, and then they're in a girl's asshole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. I thought that'd make you laugh. And it did make me laugh. Ooh, oh, I, the way it read to me is that it made you mad. Fuck no. You were like, fuck you. You know what? Here's a murder video. No. <laughs> and I did not send you a murder video. Right. You, th- you threatened to. I threatened to show you somebody getting very severely hurt, but Ugh. not a murder video. That's different. And I enjoyed your video. It made me laugh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. I was just like, I think I'm, I think I'm playing stupid games and I'm going to get a stupid no, prize no. real soon. Not at all. Seeing someone die. Uh, you've seen the last person ever get hurt on this show with me playing you know what i mean showing someone suffering and 
I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, what, what's the show going to be? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, no, we'll get into, you know, we'll get into more uh, severe injury stuff next week. And um, I've had I've had some things sent to me that are pretty gruesome that I'll I'll show you first. Tell me if you think it's right for the show. <laughs> you know what's really cool, man, <laughs> is that this culture that you're creating is now bleeding into the rest of the office. My other group chats, I mean, Chris could tell you we're in a group, like, and he's now sending death videos also. <laughs> and he's just like, look, this is funny, right? And I'm like, what? <laughs> it's like, I can't get away from it. Now. It's coming from every angle. That makes me happy. I That's thought great. it would. That's great. Yeah. But I mean, the finger thing, I love that thing. Send me stuff like that all the time. Oh, okay. All yeah. right, cool. I, and you won't retaliate with sending no. death videos? No, I don't even have death videos, man. I really don't. You, I don't. You just said you you got you went through a whole bunch. I, they're not death videos. Oh, okay. Severely injured videos. Just like somebody's fucking it's, getting run over by a car. <laughs> and then getting like flipped five times before he hits the ground. Yeah. yeah, I don't like those, dude. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it at all. <laughs> uh, not anymore. No, no. Actually, like how has how has this changed for you? Like, um, after seeing your video, like, are you able to, like, detach yourself enough to at least think it's funny? Well, here's the thing. I, you know, I've always explained that there's, that I, it might sound weird to people that it's, but that it's very gray about, like, what I like or laugh at, you know? I never liked or, or could even tolerate sports injuries on, uh, you know, ESPN or whatever. Like, when I remember, like, being a kid... Tim Crumry in the Super Bowl. I remember Willis McGahee uh, in the national championship game and like knee kind of shit, like crazy. I was not like, haha. I was like, ugh. Like, I, I couldn't watch that shit at all. Even Dak Prescott earlier this year. Those, those types of injuries don't, that's not the kind of thing that I laugh at. And then someone, you know, somebody hears that from me, like, well, I saw you laugh at this other thing. I'm like, yeah, but it's a different thing. I mean, they're not the same thing. So, I mean, do I think that like my video is hilarious? Not really, but um, I I appreciate that that like it's gonna make some people laugh for sure. So so you don't think that your video is hilarious? But let's say, for example, if a helicopter started landing in the middle, in the middle of your video, and then a blade went to your head, you'd be like, now I get it. Now well, it's funny. I'd be like, that shouldn't be in the gym, first of all, <laughs> and. Uh, you know, no, I mean, like my video, my video, um, there is, there is like a laughable element to it for a second. I think like if we were, I mean, we don't have it right now, but like if we were breaking it down, I I would tell you what part I find funny. Um, and then, and then I, then I'm just like, oh, it's, it, it's kind of gruesome, you know, it's kind of gruesome. So yeah. yeah half your body break bending in the wrong direction there's a part of it that i think is particularly gruesome but again like i appreciate that 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 might be someone's favorite thing you know they might they might laugh i mean i know it's gonna get so many meme treatments and like you know funny videos made from it like it's just gonna happen um that's pretty cool yeah i mean it's i i don't i don't like i'm not emotional about the injury if that makes sense. I'm not like, oh my God, you know. Right, you don't relive it whenever you see it. No, no. I mean, to me, it's like, I don't know. I, I can get very philosophical about it. It's, 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 been, um, it's been like a really, I don't know, like eye-opening experience, you know? Like, and and I've, I've appreciated different things since it, it's happened in, in a lot of different ways. Like, you know, I appreciate like the fact that it could have been worse. Um, you know, I appreciate my own uh, mobility much more. I got a lot of help from a lot of people, yourself included. Like, so like, you know, I have a lot of gratitude. Um, you know, it, it, it's not like that an all around horrible thing. I mean, on paper, it's a pretty bad thing and it's fucked up my month and my life a lot, but uh, it's ultimately not a terrible thing. Oh, so you're like yeah. one of your takeaways is just l like it, it, it helped you to learn how to appreciate other things more. You know what it did? Uh -oh. It ha it made me <laughs> live life 365. <laughs> live life 365. Yeah. 
That's what it did. I'm, I'm a total. I'm totally in now on li- live life, three six five. Work hard, play hard. You know what I mean? That's how I feel now. So, yeah. Um, hopefully, we're back here having fun as a big fam next week. All right. Uh, thank you guys for watching, for listening. Sorry about the um, you know. One hand. See you next week. Oh, fuck me. I feel so good. Oh, fuck me. I feel so good. I received another poster in the mail today. A Bayonetta poster. Oh, fuck me. I feel so good. I received another poster in the mail today. A Bayonetta poster. You can see Bayonetta's ass. Oh, fuck me. I feel so good. You can see Bayonetta's ass. Oh, fuck me. I feel so good. Take about 10, 12 minutes, girl, before you want to have your sexual fun with your partner or whatever you do or masturbate. You can see Bayonetta's ass. You'll be so blissfully horny that you will not want to come. Trust me. Her pussy is yummy. Her tits are fantastic. I certainly wouldn't mind tasting her magnificent ass. You can see Bayonetta's ass. Her pussy is yummy. Her tits are fantastic. I certainly wouldn't mind tasting her magnificent ass. Give it to me. Come on, Mark. Don't be stingy. I'm going to put this in your mouth and you're going to have to suck it dry. You're going to just suck it dry, Mark. you got that beautiful mouth. you got that. There's going to be enough of you for me and enough of me for you. I know that. Oh, fuck me! I feel so good! The Cool Guy Club. Hi, thank you for watching that episode of Your Mom's House. I really appreciate it. If you want to see more, you can click on any of these videos in this general area. And also, if you haven't subscribed, please do. It helps feed our cats. Don't have any cats.